Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-48. Our last episode featured the group enjoying the Shorning Festival in Colby. Food, drink, dancing, and the surprising musical talents of Bulger and Sister Elaine were all on display that evening. Fargus Stoutheart located the little barmaid Winnie under the watchful eye of her father, while Karina the Waif piqued the interest of the Captain of the Guards. With the celebration lasting late into the night, we rejoin the party as they wake up to a shining sun. Fargus, the human ranger, awoke quickly, feeling bile rise up in his throat. He lurched up from the bed and ran to the window, just in time as a stream of vomit exited his system. The squawking of chickens below told the tale of the landing. Fargus leaned against the wall and backhanded a few remains from his face as Cabe Silvertongue shook his head in dismay. Trouble with the party, my friend? quipped the half-elf. The ranger attempted to get to his feet while waving off the attention, but stuck his head out the window depositing additional waste down upon the courtyard. Bulger woke up smacking his lips and watched as a weakened Fargus struggled to get to his feet. The sailor looked over the peaked man and began to laugh hysterically. Unamused, Fargus finally made it to his feet as Cabe exited the room to go eat. A scowl marked the human's face as he looked down at the gnome. What is your problem, Bulger? inquired the angry man, but the diminutive demi-human continued to laugh and point. After several moments, the gnome regained his composure and pointed out that Fargus had something on his ear. Puzzled, the man reached up and found something clamped down onto his earlobe. Tugging it caused a twinge of pain and he winced accordingly. Getting madder by the moment, he struggled over to Bulger and asked him for assistance. Shaking his head, the sailor reached up and tugged at the item before handing it over. Looking at the item, Fargus found it to be an amulet of some kind, but couldn't piece together the puzzle. A rough, heart-shaped stone fitted with a leather latch, seemed to be hooked onto his ear. He looked at it and gave a loud harumph, which did little to calm the human down. It's a promise stone, you idiot, harangued the gnome. A look of fear crossed Fargus's face as he understood immediately. But uh, it was uh, Winnie, uh, her father. Ah, what the hell do I do? finally exclaimed the ranger. Bulger doubled over in laughter and fell back onto the bed in delight. Fargus attempted to shake the cobwebs out of his head, realizing that he may have become engaged to the attractive bartender waitress. With confusion washing over the human's face, the sailor threw some clothes at him, pointing out that he would think better on a full stomach. The disheveled man slowly put on the clothes, and a few minutes later they rejoined Cabe, who was sitting at the table with Sister Elaine and Lady Arena, who were eating breakfast. The trio looked to the newcomers with skepticism until Cabe made a drinking motion, whereupon both ladies nodded in understanding. A loud bulger ordered food to the table, but his high pitch caused Fargus to wince in pain from the hangover. The sailor noticed the discomfort and apologized before loudly ordering for Fargus, as well as making the original three laugh at the ranger's discomfort. The group recapped the events from the previous night and noticed other patrons in the Comstock Inn fared similar to that of their ranger companion. After several minutes, Bulger inquired about Karina's whereabouts. Sister Elaine pointed out that she was outside on the bench with the captain of the watch. Lady Arena pointed out that the pair had been sitting all night long. Bulger smirked and pointed out that he was happy for the waif. She seems like she needs some more joy in her life. The group nodded in agreement and the cleric excused herself. 
I think Peepers probably needs to go outside for a constitutional. I shall return shortly. Cabe then queried the group as to what plans they had for the day, as he was going to wander the town. Lady Irena asked if she could tag along, which prompted a snide comment from the half-elf, followed by a laugh. Bolger stated that he should probably be finding transportation back to Phoenix to continue his own life. His comment brought a silence to the table until Fargus fired off a comment. Are we not good enough to hang out with? He questioned the gnome. Flustered, the sailor apologized, explaining that he was under the impression that the group was already formed and he was just tagging along. The three members of the group reassured him that he was welcome to continue with them and that he was a very welcome addition. Bolger thought for a moment, but seemed torn. I'm a sailor, he began. I always have been. Just doesn't seem right to stay on land. I'm sorry, but I should probably return to the sea. His announcement was greeted with sadness, but the group pointed out that they understood, and it was not their place to decide the gnome's life for him. He paid for everyone's meal and left the common room to find the passage back to the west. Cabe looked at the Pale Ranger and asked him what his plans were for the day, when Lady Irena noticed the item he was holding. Is, is that a promise stone? She asked, causing Cabe to garner a look as well. A smirk crossed his face and pointed out that it was a very good celebration for someone. The old ranger pointed out that he wasn't sure what happened, but he would have to resolve the issue quickly, but added that he needed to go to bed to return and make his headache go away. Sister Elaine entered the common room with an anxious peepers. Cabe flipped the bird a scrap of his muffin, which the creature aptly caught quickly as the cleric led it outside to handle its business. A gleeful cheer outside the door indicated the children were present and eager to pet the bird again. Fargus struggled to his feet and shuffled off back upstairs to rest as the mage and bard headed for the door. Karina was just coming in with a smile on her face that stretched ear to ear. The elvish companion smiled and nodded to her as she also went upstairs to catch up on some sleep. Upon exiting, the pair found Sister Elaine talking with the captain of the watch just as one of the guards came up running with some information. The trio listened in as the tired man received news that Cornwall had been spotted near the abandoned farmhouse. The man was obviously tired, but also very happy for the night spent with Karina. He ordered his horse to be saddled and told the guard to get a squad of men. The captain turned to the adventurers and pointed out that their nemesis would be in custody by noon. Bowing politely, the man headed to the stables to get his mount. Sister Elaine noticed that Peepers had taken care of business, but asked Irena and Cabe to wait for her as she wanted to explore the town as well. The cleric returned the axe beak to the room where they found a passed out from lack of sleep Karina. Peepers snuggled up next to the waif, and Sister Elaine was certain that she was in very good hands. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.